Bro is shite. Let's go through it. Zero buildup. Our top stars are getting mediocre matches. Rushed buildup. Rushed rug. Rust production, rush matches, no, no real storylines going into this. Rob was just terrible. And with talks about John Cena, Undertaker coming in yet again, it's like we gotta keep bringing back the dead to make WrestleMania even watchable after what happened at WrestleMania 38. I mean, 34, excuse me. After no. No build-up. Rushed matches off the blue. Braun Strowman still underdeveloped for big pay-per-views. No stipulation matches. No high-stake matches. No career-threatening matches. No different. And then no hardcore matches. No extreme rule matches. No physical matches. Only bleeding happened in the main event of the show. And no shock finishes. The only thing that saved it was a bit of Seth Rollins and, R and Ronda Rousey. And it seems like the same thing's going to happen again. So, what we got was no build-up. Just some bullshit about The Undertaker just wrestling again. Even though I thought Kurt Angle was going to call up WrestleMania. What would be a better farewell match? Undertaker or Baron Corbin? I'm not going to... Just continue to spew rambling, rantful bullshit. Because I understand. I delay my own critiques on what happens in the show with my own views on what should happen at WrestleMania or any other pay-per-view. But by God, they have no way how to build up anything for over four months. Bar Baron Corbin is just feuding with Kurt Angle for no reason. He didn't even make his life a living hell. He did nothing to change the... Identity of Monday Night Raw, the characters of Monday Night Raw. He never caused any characters to turn heel, cause a career a career jeopardy match, or a life threatening situation to Kurt Angle. So this feud is for no reason except for Kurt Angle to have a final hoorah against a wrestler that's not even that good or prestigious. It is not even a different stipulation like a, su a submission match. What could be in Kurt Angle's advantage? Or at least a different stipulation. Everything was either one-on-one -on -one or a tag team. And the only different match is a triple threat match involving for the women's for the Raw Women's title. Well, SmackDown's down the blue, no pun intended, with no build-up, very little storyline except The Miz and Shane McMahon that took like a few months, I think since December, but at least that has a, build a bit of build-up. It makes a bit of sense. But by God... None of these guys here prove to me that Raw will be continuously watchable. They continue to lose viewers. They continue to lose interest. They continue to lose talent. And WWE doesn't know what to do with them. What happened to the NXT call-ups? Why is there a rarity of NXT call-ups except Ricochet? That just didn't show up with Aleister Black. All he did was fit, uh, continue the job squad. The I mean, the one and only job squad in Jinder Mahal after he was WWE champion for a few months. Uh, Kurt Angle, though, he had a decent, good grappling match. I thought it was a smooth transitional match he had against Chad Gable. Because Chad Gable's a good mat wrestler. That should be something interesting if you want to put over somebody. What about you put over one of the youngest Olympians in the damn roster and somebody that's actually cool and a good wrestler from Chad Gable and build him up as a good character? Why the fuck is a Baron Corbin, a guy that fucked up his money in the bank briefcase opportunity like two years ago, and the nigga hasn't been relevant since... He started to get that GM job, and that's the best storyline he had for the past few years he's been in the company. I'm being hard on WWE, not because I want it to fail, or I'm going to do some corny shit like that because I think wrestling is dead. I do this because I want my own childhood show to be good. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't do this for any profit, nigga. You see for my uh, uh, subscriber count. I feel like I shouldn't even be out here, but I do this so I can give you guys something entertaining to watch. I want to give you my critiques, my opinion, my views on what should happen on Raw, what happened on Raw, and what could have happened on Raw. That's literally it. I'm, uh, that's literally it. 
Shelton Benjamin didn't show up or didn't even have a backstage segment. What the fuck was going to happen? And he was, wasn't he previously on SmackDown? No, he came up with, Ch with Chad Gable. And now Chad Gable tagged with Bobby Roode. Nobody knows what Bobby Roode is doing. Heavy Machinery. What happened to the Ra former Raw Tag Team Champions? The Authors of Pain. Nobody knows what happened. EC3's out for some fucking reason. He doesn't show up after his little small two-match feud with Dean Ambrose. Nikki Cross is gone after getting jobbed out. To Ruby Riot. And never even had a shot for the women's title. The most saving grace was that unexpected chair shot bullshit by Seth Rollins just ever beating ever living piss out of Drew McIntyre. That was kind of a shocking sight. And a bit of Ronda Rousey with uh, her just jobbing out everybody in the Raw Women's Division except the two bitches that she's facing up from SmackDown. Because there's no big stars for the Raw Women's roster except Nia Jax and Sasha Banks and Bailey, sort of, thanks these women are so basic, so disinteresting, and they got a feud with Beth Phoenix and Natalia. <clears throat> God, I'm, I'm trying my best to keep it, keep it together. Keep it together, because I, what I just talked about right now wasn't even a match opener. The match opener was a tag team match revolving around Finn Balor and Braun Strowman against Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley, the Intercontinental Champion. Just to show how much Leo Rush got pounced around like a little rag doll and supposed to prove Daniel Bra uh, Finn Balor is stronger than Braun Strowman. Even though Braun Strowman been tossing Leo Rush like a, roll a rag doll ball, Bobby Lashley is not threatened by either, uh, not threatened by Braun Strowman, a man that could be chasing a belt right now, into just still feuding with Finn Balor for some fucking apparent reason. It's about to be two years in a row that Braun Strowman is look looking at some autistic children and causing that and calling them more of a threat to him than you know him getting screwed over back at the Royal Rumble for the Universal Title because of a limousine incident. This was before Raw. This was like a week before Raw. I don't know if that's supposed to give un uh, McMahon mega heat, even though it's unintentional mega heat. It makes a lot of sense. I thought it'd be entertaining if they did the McMahons against Braun Strowman. That'd be really entertaining. Thanks to way Braun how Braun Strowman built his popularity up. Anyway. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to make long-term storylines anymore. WWE's like, you fight... You fight on Raw, You we have minuscule tag team matches on Raw, we build it up, sort of, and then we have a reason for you to fight on pay-per-view. And we had two pay-per-views. This upload is going to be so delayed, I'm just giving you my critique now, because I'm fucking irritating. I have to take a few weeks of break, because I have school and I have a job now, my nigga. I am, I am not in the mood to waste my energy... My thought process, my patience on a show that has no way to grow, but trying to make Drew McIntyre a threat, and yet he's not facing Lesnar at Mania. He, they want to do Roman and McIntyre. I like that, but why so quick? No buildup. Roman Reigns just came back. You don't even let him come into the world, to the... Andre the Giant Battle Royal to have let him have a comeback or something. That that's quick. It's fast and it makes sure he has a bit of a comeback. Thanks, he's been out. Thanks is because of his leukemia. That seems decent enough to build back uh, his uh, reputation. McIntyre should have been feuding. Uh, could have been into the Universal Title match. Finn Balor should have been feuding with somebody else. If he, they're trying to make him super strong, but they make him just lose the Intercontinental title match on on Raw just a few weeks prior, like a week prior. The Cruiserweight title is going to continue being a sideshow, or just kickoff, because WWE doesn't know that kickoff doesn't work. At all. The brand split ain't shit, and I don't know why they continue with 205 Live. They know they have a minuscule roster on Raw, their tag division no one cares about, yet they still prefer to just continue this 205 Live bullshit. Why do you think Ricochet is doing matches? Or Aleister Black? It's 
said Drew McIntyre wants to bury the shield by beating Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 35. Nigga, they already disbanded. That makes no damn sense. I don't know where I find this article from. Next up was involving Beth Phoenix and Natalya coming out. And I understand that Beth they want to do a redemption match for, a Be for Beth Phoenix. So they want to do this tag match. While Nia Jax comes out and do the most annoying promo. It's like, bye. Yeah, it's fucking... This is why I hate Nia Jax. I don't have... I don't hate her... I hate her as a person, and I hate her as a character. I hate her as a wrestler. I hate everything about Nia Jax. This is my view. I'm not threatening Nia Jax's life here. This is my opinion. And for, for real, she's an injury bug. She's a liability to the wrestlers and the wrestling business. There's nothing interesting about her. Her personality is toxic. She obviously doesn't care about any other wrestler in the wrestling business. She obviously fucks up on shit. Her look is terrible. There's nothing about her that makes her a monster if she continues to talk like that. And there's no threat of her if she loses clean to fucking Bailey and Sasha Banks. She's double her size wide by height and length. You're telling me right now that you still lose to them? To me, it's just there's a sideshow. They have Beth Phoenix just uh, wanting a comeback match against Bailey and Sasha come WrestleMania. Then they would have put Nia Jax and Tamina into that. So it might be a triple threat women's tag title match. I don't know how they want to go with it. They just had Natalya and Sasha Banks fight with no authority figures at sight. Bars. <laughs> that, no, no. They have no authority figures. You said the McMahons are taking control. Where are the McMahons backstage except they want to go focus on Kofi because he's black? I mean, no, no, because Kofi's an 11-year vet. 11 years. That's all that matters. Just 11 years. When there's guys that have been here longer and not even gifted an Intercontinental title shot. And, goddamn. Wow. No Shane McMahon. No Stephanie McMahon, even. Not even Vince McMahon is concerned by what happens for the rest of the mid-card. Thanks, you still have... Because this is the wrestling content WWE pays attention on. Main event. Superstars. S uh, Summer... Uh, uh, NXT. Monday Night Raw. SmackDown. 205 Live. My nigga, if that's not too much wrestling content plus the UK... Plus the UK shit... If you watch UK... The revival for some apparent reason, so we can mock Kurt Angle for some apparent reason, all because of their GM squabble that didn't go anywhere except a decent match on pay per view in 2018. I thought they squashed it, and Kurt Angle can face somebody bigger come WrestleMania. Thanks, they have no build up, and Undertaker's old as fuck, and John Cena is old as fuck. Brock Lesnar has to wait 17 years to defend his Universal title after Mania, or not for another match. I. I there's nothing they got Kurt Angle to do except face off against Baron Corbin. Why in the fuck would you have Fastlane? If that's not going to build any anything up. Really. If you want to transition Shane into a heat, fuck it. No, I'm sorry. Just wow. 
Just there was no build up and you just had Baron Corbin loose clean. Via roll up. Off Apollo Crews and Apollo Crews. Why are you still in the company? Apollo Crews proves to me that NXT is good at showcasing the guys' physical, people's physical talents. But understand that this is a primetime televised TV show. This is not ESPN. ESPN doesn't have the rights to WWE. WWE is entertainment. It's a show. It's supposed to show something exciting. Apollo Crews has no personality. He had to come harass. Fucking nine-year-old harassed. Uh, Baron Corbin wanting a match but saying, will you not? What you not? Dude, how old are you? You're like 30-something years old. And you're telling me, you're like a grown-ass man. You must have a kid or something. Or a wife. You're telling me you behave like that so you can get a title match. You don't threaten Corbin physically. You don't show up with a chair. You don't show up with anything to prove that you're a threat to the WWE. Or you're looking for a title shot. Nothing. You don't want to prove any. Nobody wants to prove themselves as being the big picture. They want to just be there. Everybody's just happy to be in the WWE. If that isn't the most annoying bullshit I've ever seen any wrestler be. They accomplish their team. They're all in the WWE, but nobody ever thinks of being in the big picture. They have no character, and they do have potential in the WWE. Their roster doesn't completely suck. Their roster management completely fucking sucks. And I'm cussing a lot. I don't care. They do all these matches. Three hours. And at what point that we build up none of these guys that have potential to be something great and obviously fans love. Elias, Braun Strowman, Alexa Bliss, Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre. All these guys. And they only one of them, and very few of them have marquee matches that you want to see. You want to see Lesnar and Rollins. Sure, go ahead. I would like to see Lesnar and Rollins. What I don't want to see is Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin at WrestleMania. The fuck am I going to watch that for? That shit's a fast lane match. That shit ain't WrestleMania. They don't even call a stipulation to make a match interesting. A retirement match? Thanks, Kurt Angle. Oh, Kurt Angle already said that. That's completely pointless. Braun Strowman just wanted to make a promo back.